Getting the prompt right is hard, especially if you want the prompt to deliver consistent results at scale. But what if you can control the prompt to get a specific output structure and get a general image and the charts with just one single prompt? There are a few advanced prompt engineer frameworks that I found extremely useful, but not enough people using it. And that's what I want to talk about today. The first one I want to talk about is called Guidance. It is an open source framework initially introduced by Microsoft and got more than 12,000 stars on GitHub. Fundamentally, it is a framework that allows you to program the prompt to get specific output. It gives you very specific control of how the final output structure should look like and also allow you to construct the prompt with for each loop, define list of candidate answers, and even insert if conditions inside your prompts. So this allows you to configure the final output very easily. To get started, you can open Visual Studio Code and then we can create a Jupyter Notebook uh, with .ipymb. So firstly, we will install the guidance and OpenAI package and we will import the guidance and then do guidance.large language model with OpenAI text DaVinci. You can also use uh, GPT 3.5, GPT 4 or even open source model like Llama as well. But they do have specific syntax you need to follow. And the first thing we will try is to define a specific output structure you want. So you can create something like prompt template, like how you do in Langchain by creating a variable with guidance. And inside here, you will define the prompt template where I will define one variable with this double curly bracket and also another double curly bracket with special term gen, the part that you actually want large language model to create. In. So the final output will look something like this. Once Steve Jobs said, without guidance, AI will do more harm than good. With this, it allows you to get a specific structure output. And if you want, you can even chain multiple output together. So I can add another one, counter argument, and let me run this. So you can see here, the large language model actually generates these two parts. And without guidance framework, it's actually possible to do manually, but it will just require a lot of manual work. And apart from defining the structure, you can also restrict the actual output the large language model is going to generate. For example, I can ask large language model to choose one of the predefined answers instead of creating their own. So I can define a list of options here and then create another guidance. Is the following sentence offensive where I will give an example and ask it to select an answer from the three options I give. Here I will give an example is pretty rude. Your taco tastes like shit and try to run this. So it will follow that specific structure and give me the answer is yes. And here I didn't give it any extra prompt about what the answer should be. It just follow the list of predefined answers I give. And if I change this to be something more polite, like your taco's taste can be improved and try it again, then it will answer no. So this is a really powerful way that if you want to restrict down the answers that large language model actually generate. In use case, like writing email or customer response, where you still want to use the reasoning part of the large language model, but you already got best practice. And the other part I want to talk about is that you can also set up advanced logic like an if condition. For example, in the same use case where we ask large language model to classify if the user response is rude, we can actually create a workflow that if the answer is rude, then it will trigger a specific type of response. If the answer is not rude, then the system will generate a response like normal. The way we will do that is we will still use a slash and give the response name at root. And this basically means we will have a variable called root that we can use in other parts of the prompt. And then we can create an if condition. If root is yes, which is from the predefined condition we give, then a system will say, please be polite. But if root is no, then assistant will generate answer. So let's try this. Okay, with this user response, your taco tastes like shit. The large language model detect it is actually rude. So it triggered this workflow where assistant will say, please be polite. But if I change it to something like your taco tastes too salty, it will be showing the answer is not rude. Then it actually generate a proper response. So this is a way for you to achieve if condition logic in your final output. And there's an advanced usage as well. For example, I probably don't want this part in the middle to be showing in the final output because it's kind of internal logic. So I can actually hide this from the final output by creating block to wrap this part with the attribution hidden equal to true. And if I run this again, then the parts in the middle will be hidden. So this is how you can achieve if condition. And I think if condition is probably one of the most powerful use case for guidance. Those are just a few functions that guidance have. And there are actually more things that you can learn from their documentations. But with those basic building blocks, you can already create very advanced prompts. For example, for the use case when I want large language model to generate emails, one problem I always face with is that is sometimes I do want to use the reasoning power of large language model, but I want the response to be exactly like the best practice that I come up with. And I don't want any creativities around that. 
And on the other side, I also want to create some if conditions that if this client is very important, then book a meeting right away. But if it's just general inquiry, then just response like normal. So to achieve that use case, I will define a list of predefined priority first from low to high. And I will create one blocks at the beginning to let large language model give a priority. And then I will ask large language model to generate an email response. And in the end, I will hide those two large blocks and showing the email response it generated. And if the priority is high priority, then I want to insert this specific message to schedule a call with customers right away with my calendar link. So that's why I don't want it to be created because if you change the link, it won't work. So let's try it. Assume a customer complaint come to my inbox. Your survey is so terrible that I want to refund. This is a kind of high stake situation that I wanted to schedule a call right away. So you can see here, it actually generate a message. Also insert the predefined message with my calendar link. But if I change it to be something more soft, like what features does Webflow have, but Wix don't have, then this will show a different message and won't trigger this specific calendar link. And on the other side, I can also use guidance framework to let large language model generate real time charts for me with service like QuickChart. And if you don't know what a quick chart is, it's a open API where it allows me to generate charts in real time by passing on the chart data in a URL. If I can get a URL looks something like this, then it will generate this chart on the fly, which means if we can get large language model to turn a natural language query into a data structure like this, then we can generate charts in real time. And here we will use another function from guidance, which is ability to trigger custom functions inside the prompt. So the way we will do that is I will give the prompt a few short examples examples so that it will learn if the input is this, it should generate JSON data like this. And once it generates JSON data, I will use this function parse chart link to put together a URL and display in Markdown. So the way I will do that is I will define this function that will pass on the JSON file into a URL link in Markdown. And then I will define a few short examples here. And then I'll create another guidance. With this prompt, you are a word class data analyst. You will generate chart output based on the natural language. In here, I have this for each wrapper and I will run this Q&A pair from the predefined list. And once they finish the free of shot prompts, I will insert the actual user query and ask the large language model to generate chart data. And all those logic will be hidden from the final output because I wrap under this block. And the final output will be, hello, here is the chart you want. And the result will be calling the customer function I defined above with the variable chart the large language model created, which is JSON data. And once I did that, I can try to use this function, create a pie chart showing the population of the word by continent. It will generate this response and it is in markdown format. So if you paste this in a markdown preview, you will see this is the results, a population breakdown by continent, chart that generate in real time. And if you want, I also include a streamlit app where you can visualize and test those results better. And with the same thread of thought, you can also use large language model to generate image straight away with service like pollinations. And if you don't know what pollination is, it's also another open API that allow you to create an AI image on the fly. For example, I can do image.pollination.ai slash prompt slash a uh, cute girl. And this will generate this image right away. And this allow us to build a use case. Like if I give a story idea, it can generate a whole story as well as a proper illustration. So I can do something similar where I will have a logic block to ask large language model to generate story based on my story idea. And then have another block to generate an image linking markdown based on the story. And in the end, I will put them together. And if I try this again, Again, it will generate a proper story from a single prompt and also generate proper illustration as well. So this is a guidance framework. I think it's very powerful, even though it is still a bit buggy and uh, lack of documentation, but it is quite powerful once I get it. I have attached all those example codes I show you here in the description below. So feel free to try it out. Even though guidance is a very powerful framework, but at the end of the day, it will be still that iterative process. You will still need to spend a ton of time fine tuning and iterating your prompts to get the best results. But there are a few other community and open source projects that I think can really speed up the process here. One of them is FlowGPT. So FlowGPT is one of the biggest prompt library and probably one of the biggest prompt engineering community as well. I always go to FlowGPT every time when I try to build some specific prompts because they have a wide range of collections from marketing, programming. So for example, if I want to create a prompt for SEO blogs, I can just come here, see what are the prompts that community has voted most. And I can click on that, take a look about the prompts that other people create. So this provides me a much better starting point. And I can also get a preview about what the results will be. 
this is where I learned a lot of tactics here. For example, I actually learned about pollinations from the prompt here because someone actually built a full text-based adventure uh, with just one single prompt, which is super impressive. So I definitely recommend to use this as a prompt discovery tool at the very beginning. And on the other side, there's also another project called GPT Prompt Engineer. And the concept is pretty simple. It basically asks GPT to generate prompt and also use GPT to evaluate and test the quality of prompts. So it will firstly use GPT-4 to generate a set of prompts based on the goal you give it. For example, I can use GPT Prompt Engineer to generate prompt for writing SEO blog posts. And it will use GPT-4 to generate four or 10 different prompts. And then it will start using GPT-4 as an evaluation machine to do the testing. It will start doing 20 or 30 rounds of testing across prompts and figure out which one is the best. To be honest, from my experience, the prompts generated by GPT is actually not as good as the ones that you will come up by yourself. So I wouldn't rely purely on GPT to generate prompts autonomously. However, the part I found is most value is actually this evaluation framework. Because normally I will come up with two or three different variations between the prompts and I want to figure out which one going to perform the best at scale. There actually someone built a front end based on this GPT prompt engineer called Prompts Royal, where you can basically get GPT to generate prompt and do the testing. And once it finished, it will show you the evaluation results between different prompts and in the end, give you a score. So even though I don't really like the default prompts that GPT generated, but I often use this as a way to evaluate different prompts I generated. So I can manually paste in two or three different prompts that I created and use this platform to evaluate which one is better. So those are a few learnings I want to share with you about Prompt Engineer. If you know more interesting tactics and frameworks, please comment below and let me know. And if you enjoy this content, please consider giving me a subscribe. I will continue posting interesting AI projects that I'm building. Thank you, and I see you next time.